the Lulberts, that's our word, brought to you by Super Chats. And we'll get to those in just a bit. And I'm here with Nick Hazleton from the Anarcho Yakitalist, formerly of the Anarcho Yakitalist, formerly of Yakin with Nick? I don't know. I, <laughs> I've pretty, well, I, I still have the intention of doing Yakin with Nick, okay. but uh, uh, it's faded at this point right okay. now. Cur- I guess I got an episode pod-faded. out in September. Yeah. Okay. Currently pod faded, possibly returning, and I could have swore. I turned off all of my alarms before I started this thing. Consummate professional here. That won't happen again, by the way. That was the last one. <laughs> Just forgot that one. Last one. So, anyways, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. You haven't been on the show since December of last year. Yeah. Uh, so, time for a very long, <laughs> very. <laughs> we have you have a whole year to talk about what's been going on in your farm, which I find fascinating. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, we, I think we tried to do it, but uh, I, I flaked a lot of times. There right. A lot of times it didn't work out. But uh, I think I flaked one or two of those times, but there was there was a million you know, times we tried to get this. And I know one of them was my fault, at least. Yeah, one yeah. Yeah, my, I think most of them are definitely mine. But uh, it's been it's been a crazy year. Uh it's been it's been really fun, um, but pretty stressful. It's like trying. I'm like, I'm, I think that I've kindly kind of gotten the, I the, I've learned. I don't want to say I've learned everything, right? But uh, I've learned a lot about um, some of the like the the systems behind farming, and I wasn't really paying attention to that as I first started. Uh, this business I was more just doing stuff as tasks and not really I, I, you know like a, I don't know I, I'm trying to think of a way to explain that in a different way but uh, it like I, I'm I'm finally kind of learning like oh this is what act how how these how these things in farming are connected between the grass and and where you move animals like in the way the grass grows and how that affects the meat um, I'm kind of getting um, some more expertise. I don't think I'm an expert quite in like raising grass um, and and meat eating or I guess grass eating meat animals. Um, but I've learned a lot about that, and I've been trying to really figure out um, how to make money. And I'm starting to get there. I I sold out of yak meat this year, uh, which was cool. But I had a pretty low inventory, so I've made up for that um, for next year. But that was kind of like it was like a lot of figuring out how do we do this and it was a good year of sales um and marketing i'd say i've I've improved a lot there a lot of people know who i am um in in the farming community around um and i'm talking to a lot of people so it's been really fun um and a lot of things have changed i've got people working with me now i've got um i'm starting like a little hippie commune (laughs) we've got some we've got me and my a couple buddies have some trailers we have parked out um, in the, in the backyard, and so we're we're trying I'm to make a little bit of a farm by, business. By a new cat, by the way. Speaking of farm <laughs> updates, hear. yeah. Hey guy, <laughs> let's save it What's for later. Name? We haven't introduced you yet. <laughs> Go ahead, carry on. <laughs> I love it. I'm the this time. I don't have animal sounds. Usually, it's me with with yeah. something going on in the background. <laughs> that's that's true. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, no, it's been it's been a good year. It's been fun um, bringing people on. Like I, I'm farming like 55 acres, and that's a, a little bit too much for one person, I think. And uh, I was I was you know figuring out how to do stuff, but uh, on my own. Um, but I was really inefficient because part of my like I'm, I'm I do a lot of fixing my past mistakes, so like building rebuilding fences or uh, or. Uh, you know, fi- fixing electric fences, a lot of what I have to do. Um, and with one person that can take, you know, a, a project that takes five hours um, for for one person can can be condensed to one hour with three people, which is really cool. So I've got buddies working with me and, and um, we're, we're doing stuff. We, we're not like, we don't have a, a real business really off the ground yet, um, but we're picking mushrooms like chanterelle mushrooms and and selling them and and doing like manual labor a little, little bit of like not really contracting but like yard work and <laughs> helping people around uh, as much as we can um and other than that we're just you know living out in the woods and and having fun man sounds fun mm-hmm. yeah I, 
I'm really jealous that you're able to find lion's mane mushrooms. I have been trying to get my hands on lion's mane for the longest time. I've been looking into getting like home grow kits. Wink, wink. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, unless I'm real, unless um, <clears throat> you know, my friend. Let's just say that my friend used to grow. Um, mushrooms illegal of course um and I, I think he might have to get back into the game again just to make <laughs> just to make lines made because i've heard that it tastes just like lobster if you cook yeah. it if you saute it with butter and i'm like settled i need i need this in my life uh but that that would be completely legit you know then he then he, right. oh, he was already in a legit business let's just say that <laughs> no, dude, dude yeah, but the the, the lion's mane mushroom is good. I I've never had lobster, so I don't actually know. Wow. But uh, it's one of the better ones. Okay. Um, I'd like to try and grow it on on logs too. I, we, like it's supposed to be pretty easy. You just need sawdust. Yeah, yeah. They say that it's like something called PF Tech, which I know absolutely nothing about because <laughs> mm, wink, wink. <laughs> but um. <laughs> But I hear that you use like sawdust with it, and you can that it's that that it's possible. I don't know because I've never done it, <clears throat> but I hear it's possible. <laughs> yeah, but I def I'm definitely but yeah. They don't. It's not like they sell it in the stores. Um, I, I there's an Asian market around here that sells like king oyster mushrooms and oyster mushrooms and shiitake mushrooms and beach mushrooms, and they also do chicken of the woods. Um, and those are all wonderful, but I want lobster. God damn it. <laughs> That's what I really want at the end of the day. So yeah. Um, mm, that's interesting. Oh, you there? Allegedly, allegedly he's there. And by the way, this can't be my fault this time because I am hardwired into my router this time. <laughs> this has to be you. I are still, you none of them. Oof. I'm not editing that sound, oh, by no. the way. Let's oh, lower no. the bit rate a little me? bit and try this again. Yeah, you're there, but you're awfully quiet. You yeah, you can hear me. I'm like right up on my microphone. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. So uh, I should talk about my farm update. Yeah, yeah, this should be a little bit better. I lowered the bit rate because it was really high. Um. Yeah, my farm update. So uh, a lot of you have probably seen. Um, I don't really post on Facebook, f Facebook that much, if if at all. And if I do, it's usually posts related around Facebook is trash. You should get off of it. It's destroying you. It's invading your privacy. Facebook's a horrible company. Get get off. Get off. Get off. That's been the general theme of all of my Facebook posts recently. Um, one was kind of taken out of context a little bit and I want to apologize. Sorry, James Weeks. That's not what I meant because he, he posted something. He was like saying libertarian libertarianism is not about something. It's about this. And I was like, actually, no, Facebook or libertarianism is about getting off of Facebook. And I think a lot of people interpreted that as me saying like, James, you need to get off Facebook because I disagree with this. That's not what I was trying to say. I was just, that's been the general theme of my Facebook post recently is Facebook sucks. Are you going to play with my, my Christmas lights? Why don't you just come in, dude? Because you're gonna you're gonna come, come in. <laughs> you're gonna come in. All right, let me close the door. So yeah, um, but I did post that my cat had passed away. My cat of twenty years, Kitty Wapolis. Um, I've talked about her lots of times. I, th I think I may have talked about her lots on this program, but I definitely talked about her on my mm -hmm. Patreon only con content. Oh, by the way, talk for a second. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Okay. Yeah, I think you're just quiet on your end. Dang. I can turn myself up. I'm at 115% of my output volume. Keep talking. I'll edit this part Keep out. talking. I, I, I do remember you talking about Kitty, Opolo, Kitty Wapolis. Yeah. And uh, she sounded like a sweet cat. I do. Rem I think I've heard her in the background Okay. of uh, many shows. Yeah, she passed away. She was not doing well but right before her birthday, which was... July 4th, Independence Day. That's when I found her behind a grocery store. She was really scared of the fireworks and stuff. So it was her brother. Rescued her. Had her for 20 years. Let's put it like this. Wow. Bill Clinton was president when she was born. <laughs> wow. I mean, that's, older than, that's older than me. Yeah, she's literally a 90s kid. So um, <laughs> so her, her kind of health kind of started waning. Um, and it started about then, like I remember... I coming home and she was kind of like really winking her eye really hard and kind of 
meowing in pain, like howling in pain. Mm-hmm. And um, I thought she was going to die that night. I didn't think that she was going to survive the weekend. Um, so I was basically kind of like doing hospice care for her and, you know, getting saying goodbye and everything. But she survived and she was doing pretty well. She lost a lot of weight. And then um, last week, is it last week? Now? Yeah, last week. Um, she started doing the same thing again, but it was even worse. Her eye was completely full of blood. She could not – her her other eye didn't do that well from the last attack, um, and but the other eye went completely, and so she was mostly blind. Anytime I was kind of putting my hand towards her, she would, like, flinch because she didn't know what I was doing. So, yeah, she was not doing well. She was in a lot of pain. You can tell that like, she was walking. Like, she was – you could tell she was having a hard time walking. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, she was not doing well. And um, so basically I was like, okay, so I'm going to spend a full 24 hours with her, say my goodbyes with her. And then I took her down that you know Saturday morning and had her put to sleep. And I was crying like a bitch. I called off of work because I was, I was a fucking wreck. Um, you know? All right. You're going to come up here? All right. So, yep. Yeah, it's been the last week kind of mourning. Uh, 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 uh. Come here. <laughs> This is my farm update. Um, <laughs> there we go. Come here. Come here. Lay down. Lay down. Nope. You don't want to lay down. Okay. This is all news to you. Uh, so anyways, yeah. Um, but I was like, all right, I'm going to take this opportunity. Like a- after I kind of was done mourning, you know, I still feel bad. It still still hurts. Uh, yeah. That really cut deep. Yeah, but it's sad when you lose an animal and you've had it for that long and you build the relationship with, you know, like that's. I've, I've never had an animal for. Nope, nope. For You're not going to hop up there. Like nope, 10 nope, years. nope, nope. We're good now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, like, for. I don't know if. Jeez, you got to be kidding me. This is not the time for. So basically, I turned my closet into a into a recording studio. And you kind of walk in the closet. And she already knows how to hop up on the table. And now she's trying to hop up on the shelf <laughs> of the thing. And I'm like, oh, no, that's going to be a huge mess because. Clothes are gonna fall. That's not. That's not good. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, I was like, all right. So you know, I need to start looking for a blue cat because I know those are kind of hard to come by. I've been really wanting a blue cat. I had a blue cat, not before Kitty Wapolis. I had I had her about the same time as Kitty Wapolis, maybe a couple years later, and that one got ran over by a car. That and another instance that happened with Kitty Wapolis, I was like, okay, no more outdoor cats. They're completely indoors, one hundred percent of the time. Basically, my cat thought it'd be a good idea to pick a fight with five raccoons, and she could hold her own. Ooh. But five raccoons is <sighs> wow. Uh, so I rescued her from that. Like, luckily, I was outside smoking at the time. Um, so I was like, "Yep, yeah, you're indoor now." Uh, which, by the way, you should always have your cats indoors 100 percent of the time. But anyways, um, yeah, I like our, we have a barn cat, and she kind of moves around, but she's mostly indoor. You know. We we like to let her in. I've we've lost a lot of cats to coyotes and whatnot, and owls. You know, any they're 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 pretty easy prey, and yeah. that's kind of you know. But you have more of a work cat, though. Yeah, yeah, it's, she's a, it's a different job. scenario. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, yeah, I was like, all right, I better get the ball rolling now if I'm going to try to find a blue cat because that's going to be a whole arduous process to find one, and I didn't realize how easy it was to get. Um, because I, I ended up contacting one and I think they were like, uh, yeah, let's, let's not give this guy a cat. He's asking right before Halloween and he seems really eager to get a cat. And I, I think I blew that one. <laughs> so I was like the next one, like, um, this is the other day. Um, I got a, I got an email from pet finder saying, Hey, there's another great cat in your area up for adoption. She's eight months old, got all the stuff ready. And I just. Uh, the the plan was to pick her up on Tuesday because she's sick. She's currently sick right now um, with a, so some kind of cold, and she needs stuff for her eyes, mostly because kennel situ- situations, there's always kind of like a oh, rep- that makes rep- sense. Yeah, rep- uh, respiration kind of thing that always goes in kennels. Uh, so oh, she's yeah. got that. So they were just like, ah, no, she's she's fine now. All she needs is like this cream for her eye. Come pick it up tomorrow. And, I was, and you can take your cat home today. And I was like, awesome. So I ran and got all the stuff for the cat. So she's here now. She's still getting situated, but but, but she's like really trying to explore everything. And I'm like, ah, I gotta re- I already had a scheduled podcast before this. Wish I would have known. I would have been like, um, 
I'm not going to schedule a podcast this week, but I, I've been really bad about scheduling podcasts. So that's kind of my farm update, too, because since we've been that's kind of awesome. out of the loop. So let's talk about yeah, the man. news of the day, because there's lots of stuff going on. Cool. <laughs> Have you been hearing, hearing what's going on so far with uh, YouTube and censorship? I'm sure you probably heard inklings of this here and yeah. there. Yeah, I, I heard about Alex Jones. Um and that's kind of the probably the last person that I knew of that w- that the the last serious scandal. Okay. So yeah, that was a while ago. I'm turning you up on this end. So. Yeah, go ahead. Is there anything else that you knew about this, or that was it? No, I mean, I I know that the, you know they they have been being more. Uh, I mean, from what I've heard from other people, um, I know some people are trying to like start up. Uh, some a software business that's trying to keep that from half, like trying to find ways around um, these uh, kind of takedowns. But other than that, um, I don't really understand exactly what they're doing. If they really are targeting certain people, or um, I just know that people are concerned about it. Yeah. Okay, so we really need to go far back then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so like, this all sort of started with the Unite the Right rally, you know where Christopher mm. Cantwell got his wonderful new nickname, which we're going to call him, which we've been calling him from then on, was the crying Nazi. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he finally got his 15 minutes. Um, he actually got a few more minutes uh, this recently, about the night to right too, but that's a, we're not, we're not going to get into that. Um, but they've been kind of really cracking down on people who are um, way outside of the Overton window. Uh, not just outside of the Overton window, just any... Just even on the border of the right side of the Overton window. You know what the Overton window is, right? I don't. I was going to ask. Wow. Okay. So there were real history. Le- <laughs> so the Overton yeah. window is basically, if you can imagine the political spectrum from on a left to a right continuum, right? And I know there's lots of things. Like, I, I'm not a big fan of the left right sure. spectrum. Okay. Um, but j- just bear with me because it, it, it draws a better analogy. But. Uh, there is a window within that that left and right paradigm, which is considered okay kind of opinions to have, right? Which extends okay. left, uh, you know, quite quite a bit from the far right to the uh, to kind of more moderate right. That's that's the that's that's opinions that are outside of the Overton window. Anything left of that is within the Overton window, up to and including probably ga- gulags. I think most people don't have a problem with communism because mo- communism in theory is about trying to help people, right? Sure, sure. So <laughs> they'll, they'll let it, but I don't even know if that's true anymore. And I'll get into some of that a little bit later. <laughs> but um, but yeah, that's kind of the idea of the Overton window is, you know, there's this window that you can have that's acceptable speech. Anything outside of that window is not good. And people are trying to kind of move the Overton window back by various means and kind of the, the alt-right shit posty things about like, well, we're just doing this to push the Overton window over that much. I don't buy it. But maybe that's one legitimate tactic some people are taking. I'm not buying it, uh, but generally speaking, I'm sure some people are generally th- do think that are doing that to try to do it. But I think for the most part, most people just are just shitty people. But whatever. Um, so YouTube is trying to crack down the other way, and they're trying to go against people who are uh, on YouTube who are saying things that are, for the most part, li- uh, right of center. Uh, that's who they're usually going after. Even though, a couple examples, the other side that they're actually going after too. Um, and now it's, it's starting to get really ugly now that they're, um, what is this shoot? The Pitts, the Pittsburgh synagogue shooter, um, mm. the guy who posted on this website. I don't know. Are you familiar with Gab? Do I, do I have to fill in the Gab? <laughs> I, not bury the no, lead on that one. I, oh, wow. <laughs> so Gab is this alternative <laughs> platform because all these people are getting banned from Twitter and YouTube and Facebook and blah, 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 blah. Um, so th- Basically, this is supposed to be like the free speech Twitter. Unfortunately, what ended up happening was they didn't market it correctly. They just said, oh, we're just a free speech Twitter. We're for everybody. Instead of trying to market to a particular audience, like, hey, people on the conservative right who have been shadow banned on fi- uh, Twitter, come over here as well. And you won't you won't be tw- – uh, and, you know, you probably would have had more kind of libertarian and conservatives and maybe anarchists come on there and say, like, okay, this is a platform that we can kind of – create our own little community on and not have to worry about being censored. But instead what ended up happening was everybody was like, Oh, that's just for people who've been banned from Twitter. And of course all the people who've been banned on from Twitter 
um, have different viewpoints, but it seems that the bulk of them are really genuinely shitty people. And so the Nazis kind of took it over, <laughs> and then all the other people who were like maybe libertarian and conservatives of the mainstream maybe are like, oh, fuck this thing, and left. So basically Christopher Cantwell and Andrew Anglin are the principal users over there. So they got shut down after this because the the uh, shooter uh, who shot up a synagogue, killing eleven people, uh, uh, eleven Jewish Jewish uh, elderly Je- uh, Jewish people, and injuring uh, a few more, uh, was po- was a regular poster on Gab, and even announced that he was going to do the shooting on Gab, and said, "Screw your optics, I'm going in," um, which had ended up becoming a meme, which we'll talk about too. Uh, but now Twitter is cracking down on everything. There's some alt-right, not even alt-right. Some, some of them aren't alt-right. Um, but there's a lot of alt-right and conservative kind of streams on YouTube, which have been very lucrative for people. In fact, I've gotten into the, to the game too, but not, not doing conservative or libertarian or any, any, any kind of politics stuff. We're actually talking about news, things that are going on in entertainment, comic books, movies, that sort of thing. That's kind of what we've been focusing on. So this is kind of a stray away from my political talk. Um, <laughs> so we're, we're doing that too. But uh, there is a stream that I watch, and I don't necessarily agree with everything that they say, but I do find it entertaining, uh, called The Kill Stream, which is an alt-right kind of um, show. But again, they're more interested in what like YouTube drama. That's mostly what they talk about. They don't really talk about politics that much. They, they, they do delve into it. But I'm really kind of into it just to hear them talk crap on people like Monday Matt and Sargon of Akkad, et cetera. <laughs> but what it was happening is they have this feature on YouTube called I hope I, I'm doing a really good job about not bearing the lead here. <laughs> because I think I've explained everything. <laughs> so super chats are a way for people who are in the chat room of these live streams to have their comments read by the person who is hosting the stream. And these streams end up having uh, five, sometimes six digit like uh, audiences. I mean, they're very popular and wow. people make all kinds of money. So super chats, you pay like $2 up to what, however much you want. And I've seen people pay up to like $500 for a super chat to basically send off a message. And then the host would read that. And a lot of times on things like kill stream, because it's an edgy kind of troll drama show, they kind of attract trolls and stuff who like to make the host say terrible, awful things. Same thing with shows like JF and Andrew Worski and a bunch of other ones. But specifically, the kill stream got hit not too long ago because of the Pittsburgh shooter. But they ended up, I think last month, they did something called the Hill stream, Heel stream, which they did all the all the Super Chat money didn't go to them. It went to a charity um, where YouTube, like if you can do like a Super Chat for charity. And what they do is they don't take YouTube takes about 30 percent of Super Chat money, but they don't take any. And they give all of all of your Super Chat earnings for that particular stream to a charity of your choice. So long as they're 501C3 or whatever they are. <sighs> Out of breath here. <laughs> um, and they did one for St. Jude, which is like a hospital for you know kids who are dying of terminally ill diseases and give them free treatment. And it's a it's a wonderful, beautiful charity. And they ended up raising twenty six thousand uh, dollars for St. Jude's Hospital. Um, wow. And while they were doing it, they were getting into some pretty edgy territory, in, including singing uh, uh, a parody of the song Moon Man <laughs> by uh, Soundgarden. Uh, it was uh, by a group called Goys, Goys and Rosenbergs, and the song was called Moon Man, in reference to you know, the McDonald's moon character, Mac, Mac, Mac uh-huh. Tonight, uh, which has now been deemed a... <laughs> well, I'm, I'm making sure I'm not bearing any leads, uh, which has now been adopted as a white supremacist idol or whatever, or a symbol. Um, and the Wall Street Journal came out with an article talking about this this thing uh, that you know the kill stream and all the terrible things that the things in the super chats are saying and he's having to read out loud, and also talking about the hill stream. YouTube has then, after this article came out by the Wall Street Journal, refunded every single cent that has ever that went to St. Jude's to the people mm-hmm. who uh, did the super chats 
took down the kill stream, all of the kill stream channels that they've had, to, you know, on all their backup channels as well, and demonetized the the, the current remaining ones. Um, but they did not refund a single super chat that was not sent uh, to St. Jude. They kept their their cut of the money. So that really kind of shows you where their where their priorities are. Like fuck dead children, you know. Screw your optics. We're going in. And we're going to we're going to take out these. Yeah. Not, <laughs> take out this. At this least stream. at least donate. Oh, they're good. Oh, you're cutting out, and I know it's not my fault. Uh oh. We've been we've been having some serious internet connection issues. That's weird. I have everything off on my end. It's and probably me again. Here, let's let's just do this. And I'm not going to edit this part out. Fuck it. Fuck it. I'm not going <laughs> to edit anything out because I want everybody to know that Discord is taking a giant shit, and so is Cox Communications. I want everybody to at Cox Communications, tell them how much of a shit cock they are. That's also probably it too because I think I did a no. Oh, that's what it is. That's what it is. Save changes. So um, I think the last show I did was with Jeremy, and we ended up going on. He was on the he was on the East Coast for that show, and wow. we had the server set up to East Coast, so we were bouncing all the way over to East, and then coming back all the way to the West because we're both West Coasters. Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, damn. All right, so that should be good. Go ahead, sir. What you were saying? What like why it's like if YouTube's gonna take all that money back, they should at least just like they should just let them keep it, or if they should donate that back, you know, if that's if the, if those people are such terrible people, right? Mm -hmm. Be be better than them, not you know, <laughs> take away the money that they gave to charity. Yeah, that's and let them silly. keep everything else. By the way, they did let them keep everything else. <laughs> Wow. So all the <laughs> Just other the stuff donated to charity. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, fuck the dead children. Yeah. We're that's this is where punch Nazis ideology is going now. It's like to the point where it's like, well, we need to punch Nazis so hard that that dying sick cancer kids are going to die too. So the, the one of the Twitter hashtags that's been trending <laughs> today is Wall Street Journal kills kids. <laughs> Hashtag uh, WD WSJ kills kids. So that was the thing That's that was happening serious. today. And I've wow. been getting hit by this as well. My Lulberts, uh so I had two videos that were uh I don't know if you have ever seen this on YouTube. It's only hap I've only seen it happen to a few people. Uh one of which was a quote unquote documentary about the Jewish question. And spoiler, it ends with um the final solution is the solution to the Jewish question. Um, <laughs> and a, doc, a trailer for a documentary that never came out about Christopher Cantwell that was supposed to show that he was, you know, the savior of the West. Um, so, I mean, just not not good stuff <laughs> that I've seen this. But basically what it does is it forbids you from embedding it so you can't upload it to another site. Uh, comments are disabled and you get a warning when you show up to the thing saying, hey, just so you know that this this has been restricted due to hate speech, but you can watch it anyway. But just know that you have to be signed in. You have to be 18 years old. You can't embed it anywhere, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. No commenting, no liking, no sh no none of that. None of the, all all the features have been disabled. The only thing you can do is watch it on the site. So one of those videos had happened to me, and it was two videos. Um, one of which was about Christopher Cantwell, and it was a negative piece where basically I ended up calling him a. Uh, the uh, a right social justice warrior, and this was before I even f heard about things like the horseshoe theory or anything like that. I just started noticing that a lot of the things that the MRAs were doing, especially Cantwell, was he was doing the exact same things that he criticized, you know, the left of doing. And mm -hmm. I was like, and I was calling him out on that, and I was saying that this is all like this, and the MRAs and and a, a voice for men are terrible. That got shut down. That that well, not shut down, but it got limited just like that for hate speech. Uh, another one that I did on my other YouTube channel, the Lulberts, which has been discontinued. Um, I'm basically just uploading all my videos to my U other main YouTube channel. Um, and it was the second episode of the Lulberts, the one I did with Matt, the first one I did with Matt, um, where we talked about this new rising phenomenon, because this was like in 2015, <laughs> this new rising mm -hmm. phenomenon called the alt-right, and we're kind of, kind of baffled why the brown shirts are coming back, and we were 
saying very negative things about the alt-right, and we were also saying very negative things about the Nazis and neo-Nazis and everything. So apparently bashing Nazis now is also considered hate speech by YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, one of my friends who is very far left left winger uh he's i think he calls himself a libertarian socialist uh dick coughlin did a video a very long video that he took a lot of time and effort researching and you know editing and everything talking about the um protocols of the elders of zion and the history behind it and how it's a hoax and why it's a hoax and, how, and proof that it's a hoax basically debunking that uh that hoax document that got taken down immediately as well. So, I mean, like, YouTube is just getting really crazy now where they're, they're not even allowing criticism of Nazis. They're, they're so anti-Nazis now. All right, come on in, but you can't come on the table. Yeah, you're not allowed on the table. You know, dude. like... A, I'm sorry? As a strategy, no. The strategy, it's interesting. Like, the, it's the... It's weird that it's the, they cannot be heard, right? Yeah. You know, so like don't even have their criticism, like don't mention them at all. Yeah. Don't it's even. almost like it's kind of like the ostracism move, right? Like the libertarian strategy of, well, kick them out of society. Um, and it's an interesting th thing to do as like a private corporation. If you if you have um, if your board members or whoever your the structure runs right in your company, if that's if you have visions of like this is how the world should be. You know, that's kind of like the, the way to do it, right? Is to just mm -hmm. totally limit it and not even show that this thing exists. You know, create your big system of YouTube, which everybody is mostly people are connected to, right? Mm -hmm. um, you can control a lot of what's there. But that's weird that they would take down stuff that's that's anti, you know? Like yeah. it's That it seems like it's a real, like just, I wonder if it's a conscious strategy or just something that, it's is kind of, a mis some sort a mis of yeah, algorithm, but it yeah, said like that it was flagged thing, by yeah. the community. So I'm thinking that there's mm. like the hero program. Someone probably watched my video or saw my video. It said like, um, I can't remember the name of the title. I could look it up. It's been a while since I did that one. So you can understand why I would forget the title of my own podcast from, you know, yeah. three years yeah. ago. <laughs> it's crazy to think that we've been doing this for three years. Gosh. But it wow. was something along the line of, jeez, oh, you are you are a mess. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're gonna <laughs> knock over stuff again. You're gonna create bad audio. How dare you? Come here. <laughs> All right, fine. I'll give you attention. All right. So, um, let's see. Uh, uh, I'm juggling cat and email. This is fun. So here, here we go. So you have two videos that were restricted. One is called the Christopher Campbell one here. Why don't you just go? You can just meow at the door. That's a whole lot better than what you're doing in here. Jeez. Oh, New cat. Mo, mo cats, mo problem. By the way, donate to Patreon to delete this cat. Uh, that, that's an inside show <laughs> for my other podcast. So anyways, um, so yeah, that's called Brown Shirts Are Fashion Victims. Fashion Victims. Um. That's the, I guess that's the joke. And it says that we believe in the principles of free speech, even though even when that free is, uh, even when that speech is unpopular and potentially offensive to some viewers. However, YouTube does not allow hate speech or content that promotes or incites violence. I want to know because we I think we even said in the show that punching that punching Nazis is not a good idea either. So, I mean, I don't I don't know how they're walking away from what we were saying as hate speech wow or inciting violence here we Weird. go um in some cases flagged videos that do not clearly breach community guidelines but whose content is potentially controversial or offensive how is saying that nazis suck offensive <laughs> like, I, I i don't get it this is so fucking weird this is not a strike on your channel, but you still want to hear from you if you believe this is a mistake. Yeah. Uh, don't worry. I will be filling that out. By the way, they got rid of that one, but they didn't get rid of the one that's on my main channel because I had another one on there as well because that was the time that I was uploading to my channel and the Lulbert's channel. 
Mm. So I that one's fine. The other, this one's not. The only thing I can gather at this point, uh, at least in terms of what's going on with my channel and Dick's channel, is um, maybe maybe YouTube is um, a bunch of fascist Nazis, I guess, because they don't want people hearing yeah. criticism of fascism and Nazism. <laughs> That's the only thing I can derive from that. You know, they, 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 they both love it and hate it. They just don't want anyone talking about it. I don't know. I have no idea. By the way, we have some super chats. I don't know how we have super chats since this is not on YouTube and we're not live streaming, but um, Yori Kor says, Four Fiend 80, Eddie 8 past the bikes. I don't know what that means, but it sounds terrible. <laughs> uh, Larry Page says, I can't stand all these grabblers. Screw optics. I'm going in. Uh, Sujin Wojakski says Brimbler did didn't do nothing. I, I don't know what any of these means. They sound terrible. <laughs> Andy Rubin says grab grab them by the prissy. I think they're trying to avoid the um, the YouTube super chat uh, auto because you're not allowed to say certain words uh, on the super chats now because of all this stuff. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg <laughs> says knee gears, knee gears, knee gears. Oh, I oh, that's terrible. Jack Dorsey says, <laughs> "Kids that um, kids need that cancer. I'm sure they probably. Uh, I'm sure they're probably illegals anyway." Hashtag down the caravan. Wow, Jack. <laughs> Jack, come on, man. I thought I thought you were. You were. Come on. Whatever. St. Jude's Hospital says we have a new policy at the hospital that involves star patches, cattle cars, and trains, but it depends on the child. That's awful. <laughs> Uh, Sundar Pichai, I think, isn't, isn't he the CEO of Google? Uh, anyways, he says, um, I'm closing my eyes and imagining the grabblers turning into dust and blowing in the wind, hoping the same happens to mundane Matt. Tim Cook says, how do you, how do you get a grabbler's twinks? How do you get a grabbler twinks number? Roll up their sleeve. Oh, oh, God. Oh, this is, this is terrible. <laughs> Dude, I, I can't understand why before. why a bunch of like Wall Street Journal uh, journalists and CEOs of tech giants are saying these terrible off things. Saint Jude's yeah. Hospital. Oh, wow. Oh my God. Oh, I get it. Jude's Saint yes. Jude's Hospital. <laughs> God. This is this is why I don't do super chats on this show. <laughs> yeah, God, that's. Those are those are terrible. Uh, but you get the idea of what the super chats have been like on some of these channels. Of course, they're on yeah. troll channels and stuff. But I figure I figure I might as well Ben Garrison them, um, since they're, they're since they've been f Ben Garrisoning me. Uh, I'm gonna Ben Garrison them every every chance I get now. So I'm gonna do fake, or I mean, sorry, real. These were real super chats that I got from these uh, CEOs <laughs> and stuff because they're <laughs> terrible people. Obviously, I mean, they want sick kids to die. And they're throwing them on okay. cattle cars. But it depends on the child, right? <laughs> sick people. Yeah, they're very sick people. <laughs> so what do you what do you make of all this? <laughs> I want to hear your your take. Do Because I mean it's, it, Go ahead. Well, it's interesting because it's like it, it's that thing where it's it's a it's a private corporation that has a lot of power in the sense of cultural influence. And like, you kind of like would, you'd like to see freedom of speech or these platforms uh, become able, but, and, and like the, at first the internet was kind of that, like these people could all go out and argue. Mm -hmm. And now it's seeming like it, it's segregated, right? People get into their cliques and their tribes and stay somewhat in that for confirmation bias, but they do still argue. And now, these bigger companies, some of them are deciding to take away that option of like, well, you can't argue with this person. They're banned from Twitter. Mm -hmm. You can't argue. You can't, you know, reply to this person's uh, to these ideas. You can't make YouTube videos about this person. So now they're kind of being removed from that part of the culture, which, you know, I don't really I don't really care so much in that I'm like going to do something about it. Um but it's interesting to see that that you know what what will that do you know what will that make people um well it does it does it actually like to me i think it does both of like it it, it dissuades people from looking at these ideas because it's like well they're not legitimate youtube doesn't even let let people talk about the alt-right uh, so they don't really like some people might 
have that that they don't really exist so they don't really think about them or they they are delegitimized because of that because yeah. of their deep platforming um, but some people see that as well gosh that means that they're absolutely right because they're anti-establishment and uh, if they're being silenced without a, a logical reason that means that there is no logical reason why um, the alt-right would be um, removed from or, or somebody with those opinions would be removed from a platform like that but you know, the, so there, those those consequences and the ideas is what kind of interests me. Is like, well, how does it affect politics? And um, you know, I haven't really been able to see anything come out of it yet. You know, I think we'll that's we'll just see as it goes. Um, but it's interesting to see that you know they'll go off to a different social media, and uh, and I hate Facebook too. So I'm like kind of waiting to see. I don't I don't like a lot of these social media. Uh, stuff and I'm kind of like I'm not really looking at alternatives. Yeah, yeah. But I'd I. like to see more come up. Yeah, like I'd like to see like well, if Facebook sucks, is there a good way to do social media? I haven't seen it yet. I kind of like Instagram, but even that just kind of sucks my time. So I I I rarely use it these days. You know, so I I wonder like, well that what will that do? Will it will it kind of take the fringes of of those uh, those those fringe opinions? Because it doesn't seem like anything else is well. Like it, they're not removing communist propaganda, right? People who wanna, uh, like, I, don't I don't know. know. I mean, Dick Coffin Maybe. is is, is uh, by all intents, and, I, I would, he's not a Marxist. He calls himself a libertarian socialist. Mm. So he's not. He's definitely like you know. I guess anarcho communist. I guess. Pop, maybe anarcho okay. syndicalist somewhere in there, but I mean, he has had a couple of channels taken down recently because of political talk that he has done. Wow! So maybe I mean, they are targeting the fringe. I don't know. Is it? Yeah, that yeah. They're not taking down anything from RT or uh, or uh, the Young um, Turks, probably. Right? I don't know. Maybe maybe they are. I have no yeah, idea. Yeah. Uh, well, the young the Young Turks, they're. I know they they say like oh we're like Bernie Sanders but if that's Bernie Sanders is still establishment at the end of the day you know, he's still on the beltway um you know they like things like Obamacare so they're not really rocking the boat um yeah. people like I, th I think what they're really interested in is things that are in the 3 by 5 card of allowable opinion and what Bernie Sanders says is on that card there's nothing he's saying that's not on that card um sure you know, so if you like your choices are Bernie Sanders or Mitt Romney and anywhere in between anything else <laughs> not allowed. Yeah. So I wonder, like, is it is it a thing of going after the fringe or is it is it a is it a strategy from YouTube as are they trying to keep people who cause trouble off of their platform so they don't have to have the um, liability of being involved you know, like a, every time, so, like somebody talks about a live stream of these uh, neo Nazis, right? Then it's it's connected to YouTube because yeah. that's where that, they're doing that, I, it. Is I that the, not, what they're trying to do? I, I'm not. I would not go so far to say is a kill stream of neo Nazis. There's well, some good. like I know Ralph, uh, Ethan Ralph, uh, the guy who is the the host of the the main host. Um, he he's more of like a populist. You know, he can he's. They, they would probably classify him as alt light. He has alt right people mm -hmm. who come on his show for sure, um, but yeah, and I, I don't I don't hear him ever talking about an ethno state. I mean, he'll listen to Jared Taylor and think he's interest interesting. I, I can't I can't tell. So, who knows anymore? Because everybody's dog whistling and hiding behind things and not trying to make themselves explicitly what they are anymore. So it's hard to tell anymore. Which is why I really don't mm -hmm. like the idea of punching Nazis because who knows if they actually are a Nazi? Because everybody's dog whistling and shit. And dog whistling is being the dog whistles are being used by people who don't understand that they're dog whistles. Like I, everybody's like, oh, like, I, I would like this person, but they use the OK sign. It's like, yeah, but the OK sign was also used by people like Sargon, who's a fucking <laughs> moron. Cause, uh, like the, these these symbols end up getting t t either starting from, you know, harmless places. And being used to, to, you know, to trigger the libs, own the libs, Gamergate 2, hashtag gang weed, whatever. Um, and, and, you know, and then they get adopted by the alt-right or the alt-right makes them. And then, like, the skeptic community you know, takes them and tries to ruin them. 
be. I'll come play with you in a bit. I'll come play with you in a bit. By the way, hashtag donate more delete cat. Um, uh, where was I going with that? Yeah. So and then they get they get taken by those and they get ruined. Like Pepe, that's what happened with Pepe in Kekistan. Uh, it started yeah. out as a kind of all right, like ha ha ha, let's have a joke, and then the skeptics grabbed it and made it a cringe. <laughs> made it a cringe thing so okay. it's like i don't know you, you, i can't look at someone who has a pepe thing i mean one of the one of the the guys that i was talking to during this whole i don't know if you heard the last couple of episodes where we were talking about a a group of guys who thought it was a good idea to, to solicit child pornography to own the libs um one of the guys who <laughs> who was was a critic of that group as well was a, was an anarcho-communist who has a pepe avatar so it's <laughs> Who know, like you can't really just use that and say like oh he's using that he must be alt right you know I've been very critical of the alt right and there was a time where I was using a uh, a Pepe that looked like Max Sterner so I'm it, who knows who knows anymore it's <sighs> it's it's, it's so confusing like I, I don't that's one of the things I'm like concerned about is is like blanketing these terms onto people and like within a term like libertarian or, or communist there are so many different people with, with different opinions and so like th that's that's what's kind of sad about it is that it that if you're limiting that just based on a label you're not getting to understand the idea and that you're you know suppressing an idea and that can cause a lot of friction you know it causes a lot of pressure in people um you know, eventually something happens is what, you know, people get upset, I guess. Yeah. Um, and, and it doesn't, just because you suppress an idea doesn't mean it's going to be gone forever, you know? Right. In fact, I, I, I would argue that if you try to suppress an idea, it kind of, just the fact that it's underground and you're not supposed to read it makes it kind of fucking cool. Like when mm -hmm. every time they try to ban books, what's the first thing everybody wants to do? It's like, well, what's in that fucking book? That, that's so terrible. Which is why I'm like... I'm perfectly okay with people disseminating copies of things like the Turner Diaries and uh, Mein Kampf because I think those things need to be read by people so they can they can look at them and say like okay this is what this is now I know how to recognize it. Yeah, totally. And and a lot of Jewish organizations will publish copies of Mein Kampf because they think it's important for people to read it so they can know it when they see it. And by the yeah, way, absolutely. I should also recommend anybody who's like on the alt right, you should read the Turner Diaries. One of the first things that happens in the book once these people started turning on, because the story is about like a group of people who started militia to to overhaul the overthrow the government and turning into white nation or white nationalist Nazi kind of group. One of the first people, that, one of the first groups of people that they kill are libertarians. Wow. Yeah. Libert wow. Yeah, the libertarian alt right. You, you guys are useful idiots. You don't even realize it. <laughs> like this, this is what mm -hmm. this is where this is going. Like Richard Spencer ha does not have very pleasant things to say about libertarians. You know. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we. I mean, I would say that it. Uh, I don't know, but it does seem that a lot of that uh, the alt right. Um, ideas did um, you know i so i can't i don't know the the, the history of it but it, i it's remember being involved in... I'll, 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 I'll yeah. spoil it for you yeah the, the alt right's pretty much kind of it's the at least the movement that's out. called that yeah yeah i mean they're still ethno nationalists sure. they're still around they've all kind of avoided that yeah. that kind of term ever after unite the right um and cantwell um but yeah go ahead but but like I, it did seem like a lot of that did come from or at least a lot of the energy came from people who called themselves libertarians at one time yeah. like Cantwell and and you know many other people uh, but I, that's i only know that because that's you know the circles that i was able to see uh, but i wonder you know like it seems to me at least that that we're that in the principle we are more um opposed to those ideas in the sense of control right because we're more interested in the the basics of of power and politics rather than the uh the outcome of you know who's being harmed it's like no 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 nobody being harmed you know um so though i mean like not that we have any not that the group 
called libertarians has any political power, but uh, they yep. they would be an opponent to those ideas, I would say. Yeah. Um, so it makes sense. Get rid of us. Uh, but that, that's yeah. Well, we're know. useful. We can be useful idiots. We can go around and say, oh, yeah, well, we got to be pragmatic and, and, and build the wall and, you know, kick out kick out people who are. Um, you know, birthright citizen. I guess now the debate is the birthright citizenship. And by the way, there's a good chance that this whole birthright citizenship thing might get overturned. And we might be, we, I'm, it's not like I'm doing it right. <laughs> but, um, mm -hmm. you know, the, the birthright citizenship, there's a good chance this is going to go away. Like, uh, Trump's going to write this executive order, it's going to end up going to the Supreme Court. Trump has stacked the, the Supreme Court. There's a good chance that the, the they may look at this and say, no, the birthright citizenship should not be viewed through this particular lens of anybody who comes here is immediately, you know, and has a kid is immediately entitled to all these social benefits and rights. You know, it's got to be some structure here. And that there we go. Um, but, you know, the, the 14th Amendment was not about like, oh, if you come here and have a kid. There you go. That's not what it was about. Originally, it was about slavery, um, ensuring that s slaves were actually citizenship, had citizenship. That's what it, the intent of it was. Uh, now we have all these kind of originalists on the on the Supreme Court now, for for better or for worse. I mean, there's there's a good stuff to say about originalism. Yeah, but, that's interesting. But anyways, yeah, so like they're just, you know, they, they'll they use them when they're necessary. But then once they actually start talking about eliminating a state, that's and, you know, they actually have power, then, you know, they could be peacefully sunsetted, <laughs> so to speak, <laughs> physically removed, whatever. The, I guess the new one is peacefully sunset. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, let's go on with it. It's been interesting. Oof, 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 oof. Try that again. <laughs> Interesting watching the kind of cultural and I was kind of grown up. Can you hear me? No, me? no, I can't hear you. <laughs> um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let him rest. It says my voice is How about this? On my end. Yeah. It, it's no, I'm pretty sure it's my end. I swear to God, like I'll do, I do a live stream with uh, my co-host Larry, and we use Discord. We use another server. We have no problem with Discord servers. Every single time, I'm always worried, like, please, internet, don't fuck up. And we do this about almost about the same time, recording about the same time, give or take it out a couple hours, and it works fine. We never have a single hiccup. Everything works great. I get into my recording studio and everything fucks up. I bought a 25 foot long LAN cable to run directly to my router. And guess what? Fucking yeah. shit's fucking up. I don't know what it is. It's it's probably uh, the Lulbert server. It's, I don't know. It's, maybe it's because it's old. I don't, but the other servers I'm on, no problem. Anyways, try this again. Now, now that I've filibustered for a bit. All right. All right. <laughs> What's that? No, there it goes again. Uh, Fuck you. It. Fuck you. <laughs> you. When you chuckle, I can hear it fine. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should just have you on as a chuckler. <laughs> Damn it. Huh. Uno mas. Uno mas. I wonder if it's on my end. It says my voice is connected, but it is low, but I don't yeah, I know I'm that solid there green. aren't anybody up. Yeah. Huh. I've got, now it's yellow, but connection info discord can i well, try it again you're, you're doing well so far okay well it's interesting seeing the cultural and and ideological battles between uh these ideas um and i've been trying to pay attention to it you know as as history is being made you know and it's, it's weird to see these ideas go back and forth and i haven't studied a whole lot of history with this um but I'm curious to see where where does it go? Is is this just kind of fringe politics happening, or does as is does happen? You know, it, will the fringe kind of come into um, more of the mainstream, and will 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 things actually change in any way relating to like these ideas being discussed and then being deplatformed and then um, having the backlash there? I'm curious to see where where do people go do because the the internet is a very connecting um, 
system. It brings a lot of people together and uh, ideas. Um, I think that, that we probably have more diverse ideas than ever, but it seems like more and more people are aware of them and on one side or the other. I'm curious to see, does it, does it splinter off from here if these larger platforms like YouTube keep keep just uh, uh, not entertaining the ideas at all? Do they do they go back into the crevices of the internet or do they stay here in the limelight? Like, because the media likes to use it, uh, the mainstream media and, and like, uh, it's at least to me, it seems like they, they will talk about this. Mm-hmm. Um, like the Wall Street Journal will, will um, mention these people, you know, is this like a real phenomenon that matters or, or will it just kind of fade in the night is what I'm wondering. Yeah, I don't know. It's been going on for a while, you know. Like it seems like people genuinely believe on either side of like social justice warrior and all right. But like you said, like the movement's kind of dying for the alt right, and it doesn't seem like there's much coming out of the the far progressive left. Uh, But I like I'm I I say this stuff, but I don't even like I don't really pay attention, so I'm not sure. I think. I'm I'm just generally thinking that the the best solution if we're, if we're going to have things like social media if we're going to have things where people are connected to each other I think the best way of of doing that is just going back to the way it was where you go to a go to a website it has a forum maybe you can include some more features that are more prominent on fa- uh, on things like social media like Facebook like pictures and video and that sort of thing and just allow communities to come together that way to bring back the old bbs's with a few more features i think that's the only way of going the idea that we all need to go on one particular platform or one like one particular platform uh in a genre so like i mean twitter and facebook are completely different things that's why i really get upset when people go like well facebook is a monopoly because you you can always go on on twitter and it's like no those are very different things and they have a very different group of people on there like the peop- the audience that I'm going to go if I'm going to go talk on things on Facebook is very different from the audience that I would re- reach with Twitter. And the the content on there is completely different. And you know, like I know that my, you know, my sister's going to be on Facebook and she's going to post pictures of things on there, but she's not going to be on Twitter. And if she's on Twitter, she's going to have a very different thing that she's going to be on there. Whereas Facebook, she may be like, "Oh, here's what my kids are doing today, blah blah blah." We're on Twitter, she'll probably be maybe talking more about politics or movies and that sort of thing. Um, so they're very different. They're, they're very geared to very different things. And sure, there's things like MeWe, which is supposed to be a direct competition to Facebook, but mom is not on on MeWe. She, she's on Facebook. She doesn't understand all this fancy who, who diddly on something else. Mm-hmm. I don't care about mm-hmm. all that, you know. I'm on Facebook because all my friends are on Facebook, Jim. But I think I think it's going to come down to like there's going to be something like Facebook where, you know, old ladies can post pictures of their family and, you know, friends and family can come and talk about that, but they're not going to talk about politics. Then they're going to have MeWe for all the for the all all the libertarians and ancaps and steam it, you know, that's going to be the Reddit for for libertarians. And there's going to be like Gab for the Nazis. And then there's going to be um you know, some there's there's got to be like, I'm sorry, the, the idea that you that everybody needs to be on one particular platform for per genre, and we all have to try to get along. That's not gonna it's not gonna work out. And especially, you're never gonna have anything mainstream ever ever gonna have anything mainstream where your principal users are people like Christopher Cantwell and Andrew England. I don't want to go onto a website where every day I'm fil- trying to wade through content fit for the Daily Stormer. And, and that's me who, who like, you know, I, I think it's terrible, but I can put up with it. If, if I know that there's going to be good things on there, I can wait through it. Most people are not like me and, and I'm not going to do it. <laughs> like, I don't want to do it. I'd much rather go onto a site where, you know, a bunch of ant caps are napping their ear off and I'm trolling them for the most part, um, but still have general agreements with them overall like i agree with them in conclusion but maybe not the the methodology that's going to be like the the platforms that i want to be on totally. and then and then peek, peek on to what the lefty twitter and the lefty groups are doing and see what they're doing and then i can build i think it would be an idea to make some content on the libertarian youtube that's what it needs to happen 
centralization of everything is, is a bad idea, even even if it's free market, quote totally. unquote free market. And the tech giants are evil, awful people, and you should not try to distance yourself yeah. as much as possible. I I agree. It makes a, that makes a lot of sense to me. Like it's it YouTube is awesome because it's uh, it is a central place because you can find a lot of things. But man, thing to go to your to cater your too upset about like well I can't find I don't watch these videos that that they're deplatforming so I don't like I don't really notice it sometimes sometimes some platform oh, there he goes again community guidelines and and that's kind of frustrating and I can like I don't it's not something that affects my with those people those channels um, I have to deal with it because sometimes it's 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 just kind of the community like the whatever it is whatever they call it um, community guidelines like they won't somebody will report them and then bam their their videos uh, demonetize and like what do you do about that um, if you're if you're not really doing it full time um, and you're just like kind of posting content that you're like well it has nothing to do with with politics or 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 hate speech or whatever it is they just happen to say something a little bit edgy that somebody didn't like yeah yeah i think that's what it needs to be i think it all just everybody needs to just have a circle jerk <laughs> i think that's, that's the only way around it I, I don't see any other way and it it, it it also just can't be for for social media it also has to be for things like payment processing yeah that's interesting because paypal has been shutting down people left and right too they wow. shut, yeah, they shut down Hatreon, which was Cody Wilson's project. I don't think he oh. – Cody Wilson's awesome. But, yes. Uh, and I don't think he'd, he would agree with a lot of the alt-right people for sure. But he he, he saw that as a problem, and, he, and rightly so, because now they're coming after not just people who are in the Overton window, you know, but they're also going in people who, like – I mean, just barely outside of it, like libertarians. But now they're also uh, an, an anarchist. But they're now they're after even going after communists, who you think they are in agreement with. Take for example, Dick <laughs> Richard the Dick Coughlin. So I mean, hmm. they're going after anybody. They're going after everybody now. Even people who are making content saying like Nazis are terrible. Well, that's hate speech now. Well, what what can I talk about? <laughs> maybe it, yeah, maybe we should just decentralize everything but then again like my options aren't that good like me we there's not yeah. much there's not much going on there that i find interesting um there's people on there i'm not saying that everybody on there is terrible by the way there's lots of cool people on there um but um you know like uh you have that then you have d tube which is putting everything on a blockchain terrible fucking idea for video let me just say that again terrible idea for videos putting shit on a fucking blockchain <laughs> just because it's on a blockchain doesn't make it good please stop <laughs> i think they actually are distancing themselves from the blockchain idea so that if that if that's happening that's a good thing i think that's where killstream is at now because they've been kind of taken off youtube but they're they said 600 six thousand percent we're going we're going back on there um wow what else? Uh, then you have, uh, I think, the most viable thing right now, but you can't do it for live streaming because the way it's working, with the, how it works, is BitChute, which is mm. using peer-to-peer -peer technologies. Uh, so when you when you go and watch a video there, you're basically uh, the 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 video player itself is actually a BitTorrent, and you're actually like sharing it with other people as well. So the more people that are watching that video, the more it gets disseminated. That's a good idea. That's a really good idea. That's probably the best idea yeah. ever so far. Um, but yeah, the, the other options they're not they're not working out too well. And Gab is constantly under attack. Like the the Microsoft has been going after them for using their code. Uh, their their web domains keeps getting shut shutting them down. And you know the guy that runs Gab is not a Nazi, but you know his platform has been overrun by Nazis. <laughs> you know, there's good people on there too, but. Uh, you know, hmm. if your principal users is Cantwell in England, it's that's that's it. That's, that's going to be your core demographic. There's nothing you can do about it unless unless you want to ban them, which they have been shadow banning them. But again, if that's supposed to be the free speech thing, it's a problem too. I don't know. It's all it's all terrible. The, Gosh. Yeah, we we need. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Like, I, I, I mean, I wish I knew more about it. Like, I could, like, I know some people that are interested in this, and I, and I don't know very much about what they're doing. Um, so, I, like, all I can say is, like, wow, I hope some of it works out. I don't want to give away people's business ideas, but um, I've been talking to some people. It's becoming more of an issue. People want to, people are looking for that because of like deep platforming just because of the whole nature of of um these companies trying to really, really capture your attention and um be not, like dangerous in the sense that you could waste a lot of time you know like yeah. it could well be, social media is a waste sucking. of time though let's just face it <laughs> totally i'm <laughs> It, I don't get I mean it's cool to like know what people are doing mm -hmm. I like knowing people from ar around the world that I don't get to see very often and see what they're doing but yeah man I could be doing a lot cooler stuff than um, scrolling through through Instagram um, I could be making I, I, I've i saved a lot of time in the last like three weeks that I deleted the app off my phone it's insane like you what, don't what, what app did you delete? Like, I deleted Instagram oh, okay no, oh, so like, I'm like trying to instant message you on Instagram. Oof. Yeah. I, you were lucky. I, I went on today just to chuck the okay, <laughs> my okay. messages in case. Because I, cause but, I uh, figured that was like, I think you told me that was like a good place to get to you. And I don't have Facebook on my phone and I don't have Facebook Messenger on my phone. So I was like, uh, I think he has Instagram. Uh, I'll just text him on that. I don't have your signal. Yeah. We should we should definitely get that going. Yeah. And maybe should, we should I, start using Signal. I think you can use Signal on your desktop for voice. Okay. We maybe we should okay. just start using that. That's probably a good I mean, idea, but we kind of move away yeah, from Discord. Yeah, I'm looking for a, an alternative to Messenger. I I unfortunately I still have that on my phone just cuz people message me there and it's yeah, I don't know, man. I I don't know what to do cuz it's uh it's very useful because everybody's there, um but it sucks. Yeah. Uh, and it's like Skype too. It's the same thing where it's like everybody has Skype, not everybody has Zoom or Discord or Signal um to do a show. Uh but Skype sucks and yeah. apparently Discord's not so great either. <laughs> well, Discord used to be really good. I mean, we were doing it great for a while. And I still use it for my other shows, and it seems to be working. But I think it's something mm -hmm. with this room because it's not just you. It's also Matt. It's also Jeremy. I think we actually did a show pretty well, which was surprising because usually he has a connection problem because he's always ciphering out internet off someone else. But he was at a house yeah. where we did it. So let's start wrapping this thing up. Let's. I want to do two yeah. things. I want to talk about Snooze, and I want to kind of go over some of the Amazon buys. So which one do you want to talk about first? Um, let's talk about the Amazon buys first. Okay, let's let's go through some of the Amazon because we haven't done this in a while, and my Amazon has uh, income has kind of dropped considerably, and so uh, we're going to talk about stuff that happened in the last ninety days. And I know that we haven't done it for at least four or five months or six months, maybe about seven months. <laughs> we haven't done one of these things, and I don't want to go through all of the things uh, because there's been a lot. So I'm just going to talk about some of the the cool stuff that we bought. And apparently, I can only go through ninety days, uh, so I'm gonna do. Ah, fuck it. I'll, I'll set. I'll set it back after this. I don't want to talk about things because someone bought like you know chews for their dogs. Okay, cool. So someone did buy a um, ten pack of uh, fifty gigabyte double layer um, Blu-ray disc. Which, by the way, now that I'm done with my three hundred sixty-five days of doing content every day. On uh, on that, I gotta. I want to start comp comp compiling all the stuff, get it ready to go. So once we hit our hundred episode, I can put put everything on a um um. What do they call it? What are, what are those things called? M discs, which you're actually yeah. burning onto stone, and then pass those out to some Whoa. of the Patreon. Yeah, so th they're good for a thousand years allegedly. That's badass. Yeah, so they can have all the Lulberts content from one hundred. From zero, uh, from negative one, because we did a beta episode with Seamus to test the waters to make sure everything was working good, and then we did a full episode after that. Um, so we have that. We can release that one, and then 100 episodes of the Lulberts, plus the not the Lulberts episode, and a few other stuff, and then all of the uh, Patreon content that I created, Patreon only content, put it on a Blu-ray. Also, the full res image images and the uh, the uh, the Photoshop documents versions uh, of all the anarcho gadsden flags we could do all that too 
Oh, so, nice. Yeah, I'll put a whole bunch of cool stuff on there. Someone bought Dead Cells on Nintendo Switch. I don't know what that is. What is this? Uh, this looks like. Oh, oh, okay. I've seen this game. I've seen I've seen stuff of this game. This actually looks kind of neat. It it almost looks like a like an eight bit, but the 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 backgrounds and everything are really cool looking. So it looks like a platformer. Cool. Uh, Meditations, a new translation. This is I guess this is a book by Marcus Ellerus, and I don't know what this is. Oh, it's a philosopher of Rome. Okay, I think. I just glanced at the title. Remember last time I did that, I was like, I have no idea what this crazy occult technology of power book is. It looks like a bunch of crazy wackadoo. And then I read it and I was like, holy shit, this is actually amazing. That's a really good book, by the way. Ride the Tiger, a survival manual for the aristocrats of the soul. Um, Julius Evola's final major work, which examines the prototype of the human being uh, who can give absolute meaning to his or her his or her life in a world of disillusion? Interesting. Anarcho-fascism, <laughs> nature reborn. Is this a thing? Is this really a thing now? Anarcho-fascism. Jesus Christ. Well, someone bought it on paperback. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> We're going through some of it. A Resident Evil Origins Collection. On PlayStation 4. Um, I guess this is all of them. Origins collections. About the bronze. So yeah, I think it's I think it's a collection of uh, all the old stuff and uh, all the older games. Old school Sega Genesis 1. Oh, standard AV cable. So someone's getting their, um, their old Sega Genesis stuff back together. A few other stuff for that as well. Uh, some, al- some coin alkaline batteries. All right, so let's uh, let's dip back a little bit. Let's go back to April, I think, and then I think August. So July thirty-one. Let's see if let's see if that's ninety days. Nope. Let's, uh, I think this will be it. If I can get nope. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> we'll get this. Maybe May third. We'll try that one. Yeah. Okay, we got May third. So May 3rd to, uh, to August 30th, I think. Gloves, do some 501 jeans. Uh, revise handbook of basic instructions for small earth dam and wear construction. Uh, yeah. So you can build masonry wares and small earth dams on their own farm. Is that you? <laughs> Did you buy that for your farm? <laughs> I don't think so. All right. <laughs> Um, so Raspberry, Raspberry Pi three model B motherboard. Oh, so this isn't even the new one. So this this because this came. I think someone bought this before the new one came out. Ooh, that's that's a bummer. Um, Amazon's basic USB uh, C to uh, it's a it's a converter for USB C, which by the way is awesome. USB C is the way. I got a couple things that are USB C now. I got the um, the eight bit do controller that looks like a Nintendo uh, Super mm-hmm. Nintendo controller, but it has like the the two analog sticks, and that uses a USB C to charge, which is awesome. Um, and then of course I got a Nintendo Switch. Oh, someone actually bought one of those. Oh, sweet! Someone actually bought it. In- <laughs> oh wait, no, this is uh, the one that looks like an NES controller, but it has four. But oh no, it's got two buttons. So someone's probably getting a, uh, yeah, thing for the Raspberry Pi because yeah they're buying stuff for Raspberry Pi as well. HD Link f- cable for Dreamcast. So someone's setting up their dream. Someone's doing a lot of retro buying stuff on my stuff. So that's kind of fucking awesome. And for an original Xbox system, wow. That was the I love I love my Xbox because you can you can actually play Conquer's Bad Fur Day on that thing which is by far my favorite uh game of all time fight me IRL it's the best game fight me IRL so let's talk about snooze <laughs> by the way if, if you want us to read it and I'm going to try to be a little bit better about doing this more regularly if you want to buy something cool on it I'll read it if it's cool if you're going to buy things like overhead lights and rubber gloves which I did see some of that stuff um, I'm not uh, I'll read it I'll read it. Fuck it. But we're we're going back through a lot of time, so I just want to kind of let's talk about snooze. 
you st- I posted something on Instagram saying like, oh yeah, the, uh, I'm really enjoying the snooze thing. Uh, I think, uh, and I trans, this is why you haven't heard me vaping uh, in recent episodes. I've been on snooze lately. And I posted that I, that I got this new flavor, which is the General Snooze Original. And it's kind of interesting because it's black and gold. It kind of looks like an ANCAP flag if you turn it on its side a little bit. Uh, mm-hmm. And you said like, oh yeah, if you tried the Zen thing. So you've been in snooze lately, right? Not really snooze. I've been, I've been liking nicotine, man. I, I started, I chewed like I don't know about yeah, uh, two years ago probably. Okay. When I turned eighteen, I was able to uh, buy it myself, and so I did a little bit of Copenhagen. Um, but I didn't like it. It, oh, it messed with shit. my gums. It messed with my gums, and uh, and I so have when like, you gonna see any gum line? When are you gonna get the rebel flag uh, baseball hat and start doing some dip <laughs> reviews on YouTube? <laughs> exactly. Hey, what's up there, Mother Truckers? Today we're going to be doing some Copenhagen wintergreen. <laughs> Can't wait. Yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, <laughs> I don't like with it. the outlaw. I can't, I can't do dip anymore. It's too, uh, it's too gross. But yeah. I can do. Uh, I mean, some if I, if I, it, it depends. Every once in a while, every like every three months, I might, I might uh, put one in and from somebody you know i'll get tempted but uh um i but i like nicotine and i uh i've been trying to kind of stay away from tobacco because smoking it hurts my lungs and uh and chewing hurts my teeth Uh, so i've been trying to avoid it um so one of the things me and i've always i I don't know for the last few years uh my buddy uh every once in a while get these zen pouches which are the uh, tobacco uh, free nicotine pouch. I don't know what's in it. You know, it's a bunch of flavoring and and cornstarch, and I don't know how they extract it. You know, the nicotine from it. But you yeah. can get like a three milligram and a six milligram, and it's like vaping for uh, for chewers. You know, for dippers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's what I like. Right. I'll, you get right. I know what like, you're talking and, about. Uh, I've, I've, I've I bought a pack of it. It's actually pretty good. Go ahead. Yeah, and and so that's kind of like the most that I've been messing with. Every once in a while, I'll smoke tobacco with. A, I don't like to smoke cigarettes or, or by itself. You know, I'll smoke it with weed or something. Okay. Um, but I try to stay away. So I use these ins sometimes. Um, I like I like nicotine, and I like uh, I like trying to um, I like using them while I'm doing stuff. You know, while I'm working out and on the farm. Um, uh, it's nice just to have that buzz going. Um, just to kind of keep going through some of the monotonous and, and repetitive tasks. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I like it. So I, I like that stuff. And, and I've read some things recently that nicotine's uh, an interesting nootropic, you know, it, it, it does yep. give you um, an increased focus, I think to me. Um, and so I enjoy it when I'm doing work that uh, that's just kind of, especially uh, um, physical hard. And, and even, I even kind of like it when I'm writing, like if I'm running an email um, for like marketing or something, uh, I don't, I like that too. Copywriting. Um, yeah, the, yeah. The good copywriting. Right, not the IP. Yeah, not <laughs> I that's an unfortunate name to call it. That. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. Why did they even call it copywriting? I, I have no idea. What sales copy? I don't get that. Yeah. Um, but anyway, but yeah, so I like it for that stuff, and that's kind of. Um, that's kind of where I'm at now. Is like I don't buy them, um, but uh, every once in a while I'll get them from a friend, and and uh, I might keep a, a like they'll they'll give me a couple, and I'll keep them in my pocket or something. I'll use them randomly, uh, but I like them because they don't they don't make me sick uh, as as long as I spit them out. Uh, I don't know, like it, some people swallow uh, no, even snooze. I know people that swallow it, and it's uh, that's intense for me. I get sick. But they small they swallow the packets. No, no, that's just a spit. Oh, okay. I, I've never had a problem with the with the snooze. Okay. We should talk about what snooze is. They're kind of bearing the lead yeah, a little bit. Right. Okay, so you were talking about the Zen the Zen things. I you told me about those, and I was like, oh, I've seen those, and I, and then I went to their online store to see like where you can buy them, and you can buy them at like almost every terrible herp station. Seven Eleven mm-hmm. has them, like. Bunch of bunch of places have them. Like they're 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 much more prevalent than 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 Swedish snooses, which totally. is what I've been using. And I I went and checked it out, and I was like I was I was like yeah, let me get the coffee one. And they're like okay, do you want the the three or six? I was like, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I was like uh-huh. three. Uh, 
and I was like, oh, they're milligrams. Well, I'll, I'll try six because I know the snooze is about four. They have about four grams of free nicotine, and I know that they're going to be advertising nicotine on their things. Um, it's probably going to be free nicotine, which is free nicotine is the kind of nicotine that you're able to absorb through your through the the mucus, mucus membranes of your mouth. Because um, yeah. I think Copenhagen has like 13 milligrams of uh, of nicotine per per gram. Wow! But the free nicotine in there is only something like like two or three. So I see. that's why they usually have like big bulging things because it's more they're using more than a gram. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah. Um. So yeah, I, I was like, okay, I'll try the six because fuck it, why not? <laughs> that 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 almost knocked me on my ass the first time I used it. I was like, yeah. holy shit, yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. The, but that's actually made by a company called Swedish Match, which I thought was interesting when I went to their website. I was like, oh, Swedish Match. Okay, I'll I'll try this. I'll see what it's all about. Swedish Match uh, is kind of the I don't know if industry standard is the right term. But it's the um, it's it's kind of like the uh, Coca Cola of, um, of of Snus, right? And there's no real Pepsi. Uh, well, I guess I guess like AG would probably be the Pepsi, um, AG tobacco. Mm-hmm. But Swedish Snus or Swedish Match is a company, obviously based out of Sweden, that um, produces a General Snus, which is the 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 standard for what Snus should be. It is kind of what it was they came with the early 1800s or so um i forget the guy who probably some someone named johan <laughs> because yeah, yeah. That's what everybody in sweden's name is right um <laughs> he developed a a formula for for uh snuff that could be placed orally uh and he, he went around the world to try to find different types of tobacco to 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 use in his his thing um and the flavoring and the salt and kind of made the formula and that's what i've been using lately is just because i wanted to get away from from vaping because vaping is gay um <laughs> <laughs> but and i was like yeah and it's it, it was getting too expensive and i could buy a packet of snooze and it'll last me almost a week uh, for five bucks versus you know uh every two weeks having to go and paying like anywhere from 30 to 50 dollars depending on if i need to get coils for it as well i got kind of expensive so I was like, okay, let's, let's. I like I like nicotine for most of the reasons you say that, and also helps me metabolize caffeine, and being ADD, having high doses of caffeine, and being able to metabolize it better. That's really good. It's basically a form of self medication. So I was like, okay, uh, let's try the snooze thing, and I fell in love with the taste. It tastes almost like um, like an Earl Grey tea plus salt plus. And I've talked about this already with. with someone who hasn't tried it um yeah earl gray tea plus black pepper and and salt table salt and it's really good i really enjoy it but those zen things man those things are those things are interesting but i think i like snooze a little bit more um yeah so have you done this at all or i've done it a couple times i've never had sweetest match i've I've had like camel snooze packets oh that's that don't count yeah and so i didn't (laughs) i didn't enjoy those american quote-unquote snooze it's not really snooze yeah, I believe it. it. It was um, it was really hard to get like the saliva. Oh, wet in. There he goes again. Rip in peace. <laughs> I'm you know I'm just gonna put signal on this fucking thing. I think next time I do it, I'm doing I'm using signal. We'll see how how the audio is on that thing. But yeah, try try that one more time. Okay. Seems to be better. Oh. Well, yeah, I so I've tried it and I don't uh yeah, it just was too it was like stay dry. And I didn't like that. Oh. Um compared to like chew, that's what I was into when I tried snooze. Um it was just easier to get a buzz from it. Um but the zins are definitely a different thing. Like it's not the same mm-hmm. um as tobacco. Tobacco seems to have a uh, a little bit m- more to it to me. Um like zin is a little bit more um more like it you get the buzz but it's not as as uh complex i guess you know it's a different feeling i guess like it's yeah, more of just kind of one piece has, of it yeah tobacco has probably more stuff going on in it too yeah you know? right right kind of, kind of like when when they try to take out the thc and then use it as like a prescription drug it's not the same as just smoking weed because there's other things right. like cbd and blah 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 yeah exactly so. Yeah, I definitely yeah, so enjoy I, snooze. 
it's it's a good good way good alternative for people smoking. Uh, you can use it discreetly. You can swallow the spit. Uh, you said you had problems with it. I have not had any problems with it. Nice. I just put, I just throw it up in my upper uh, upper lip and go about my day. No spitting. No gross stuff. No one even knows that I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. I'll talk. I'll have a conversation with them. It's up in my upper lip and my front. Like if I do a real big smile, they could probably see a little bit of it. But that's about it. It's really that discreet. Um, I love the taste. They have different flavors. I don't know if you ever tried some of the other General Snooze flavors, but you know they have original, which is the the one that goes through an extra thing where they're a little bit more moist. You throw it in. They last about thirty minutes, and the flavor is a lot more stronger. Um, then they have like the white portions, which is all the other ones that they sell in America, which they have mint miniature mints, which are just smaller, lower dosage of nicotine. Um, then they have winter green and then the white portions, which is like this generally the same flavor as general original, but since it's a white portion, it has less moisture in it. It lasts longer. It takes a while for it to the flavor and everything to develop. Um, that's pretty much the big difference between the two. And I think the oil of bergamot's a little bit more prevalent in the, uh, the white portions, which I like oil of bergamot, Earl Grey tea. That's what the difference between Earl Grey tea and black tea was. It just has oil of bergamot in it. Yeah. So, yeah, I like, I like, I like the white portions or whatever, but I can see why someone probably would like wintergreen or something like that or mint. Sure. So you probably should try those. Yeah, I'll have to check those out. I'll try and get something better than camel <laughs> next time. Yeah, stay away from Skull, Marlboro, um, yeah. Camel. Those they're trying. They're trying to aim for an American market. They're using cheap tobacco. The 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 nicotine content is lo- intentionally meant to be low because what they want you to do is to continue smoking or dipping. But they want you to be able to do it in a place where you're not able to smoke or dip. That's the idea. It's basically just like, oh, let's get you to your next smoke break kind of attitude, which I think that's a shitty way to to get people to dual use. Yeah. 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 Damn. Yeah. So try the general stuff. You You have to find it out. If you go to the general website, again, not a sponsor. I would take their sponsorship though. I will say that I don't think they will. <laughs> they haven't. They don't even sponsor snooze uh, YouTubers or anything. Uh, but yeah, that's really good stuff. Try try a couple of the different flavors. See what you like. Um. Yeah. There you go. Cool. <laughs> but the difference cool. between this and like uh, dip is again, it goes in your upper lip versus your bottom lip. It's not coming in contact with your salivary glands, which make you salivate. And it's not fermented. It's steam, mm-hmm. steam cured is the right word. It's pasteurized, steam, boiled, whatever. Um, so you're able to swallow the spit, and it's not going to upset your stomach. You just throw it in your upper lip, you go about your day, you know, until 30 minutes for regular or for original portions. White portions will last you about a good hour. It tastes good, in my opinion. It gives you a buzz. And if you don't like that, try it. I'll turn on. Try and see. Try the Zins. What were you saying? <laughs> Get out and see and just to check it out. Just there's snooze. I'd be interested. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think I know what you said. <laughs> Let's just wrap this up then. Let's just wrap this up. Next time we'll, we'll try. Uh, we'll have to test, test, test the audio quality. I'm, I'm Lulberts. If you're listening to this, if you want to help me test out, um, some other, some other platforms. Cause apparently, my computer and, and Discord in this room is not working out. It's just not. Mm. But, you know, the show wasn't bad. <laughs> so, yeah, anything you want to plug before we go? If you, if you can. Um, sure, yeah. Uh, my, gosh, what am I doing? I'm not even doing my show. But Yakking with Nick at Libs, or, gosh, you just have to look it up. I don't even know what my, it's it's just yakin.lipson.com. Uh, you can find the uh, Yakin with Nick on iTunes and stuff. Uh, and then if you're interested in learning more about the farm, hazeltonfarm.com. If you look up Nick Hazelton Philomath, um, that's hard to spell. Uh, gosh, if you look up Nick Hazelton Yaks, you'll find everything. Yeah. And what's great about Nick is unlike some, I don't know, some, I don't know, let's just say for the sake of argument, some, uh, um, 
tech podcaster. I guess that's a good <laughs> random thing to say. He actually has good taste in music. I'm just, I will say that. I don't think you ever talk about it, but I'm sure, I know that you do. You know, you wouldn't listen to things I, like, I don't know, Winger. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while since I did a dig on <laughs> Brian Sovereign. <laughs> I, think, I think it's oh, well overdue. <laughs> we love you, Brian. Uh, anyways, so uh, yeah, a uh, couple things. Uh, just a couple things, and then and then I'll wrap this up. Uh, got a new YouTube channel, Jim Jesus Two Electric Boogaloo. Um, doing a new po- uh, live stream slash podcast. It'll be a podcast soon. It's not a podcast yet. Called Recording in Progress. The letter in progress, like recording and progress, um, <laughs> which is not libertarian. It's kind of liberty minded, but it's we we don't talk politics too much at all. Um, it, mostly about entertainment stuff, stuff that's going around in comics, which I don't read comics, but it's I love reading comics vicariously. Um, comics, movies, music, that's culture things. Um, anything else? Oh, yeah, shop.lowberts.com. We got some new t shirts at the store, store.lowberts.com. I have a couple of Kokesh related shirts that just put out because. <laughs> Things that him going on going on with him, which we talked about in the previous episode. Yes. I think that's it. I think that's it. I think we'll wrap it up there. All right, thanks for coming yeah. on, Nick. Absolutely, <laughs> it's great having me. you on. And next time, hopefully, the audio will be or the the connection will be better. The audio is fine. Um, yes. Yep. So, Shem Hem Farash, Hail Satan. <laughs> Still not gonna say anything. <laughs> <laughs>